Hey, I'm the Mayhem here, and today we are looking at the Clockwork Pi U console, a real fantasy console. This is a handheld cyber deck by Clockwork Pi. It's an absolutely phenomenally well designed piece of kit to create a Raspberry Pi CM4 or 5 cyber deck. So, today we're going to start off by unboxing this and getting it built up. So, let's get started by seeing what's inside the box. In here we have our instruction manual. We have some U console SD cards from Carbon Computers. These are running RetroPie, PowerOS, and Kali, and they're already pre designed and pre made to run with the correct drivers for this hardware. So that's very nice to have in there. We've got our main front cover. We have a thermal pad for connecting to the back case. Onto our next layer, we then have our keyboard our keyboard silicon cover and our actual display. We've then got our main board here, our expansion board here, our trackball, speakers, power button, blanking plate, Wi-Fi adapter, power management and battery holder. The main chassis of our actual U console a set of screws that work for everything on the device, our back plate, and our kickstand. So that's everything that comes inside the box. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move the box to one side, get the parts we need, and start building this device up. So step one is going to be fitting our screen, which is this part just here. And what we're gonna do is just gently feed this ribbon cable through the hole. and our screen is just gonna sit flush in there like so. Once we've fitted the screen, our next job is to fit the actual switches for the keyboard, and they are just gonna literally place straight on top like so. And there are actually some locator pins here, 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 and here to help keep everything in order. We're then gonna place our trackpad onto the trackpad mounting plate here. There are four little locator pins on that as well, and it just fits flush on top. We're then going to place our actual switch covers on there and make sure that these have all found their locator pins as well so everything is all fitted correctly. Really, really well designed device for actually letting you get everything fitted right first time. After this, it's already time to actually fit our front cover. Now, I will say I have heard that people in the past have managed to snap their displays and crack their displays by not making sure that they're flush and square into the hole. So just make sure, run your fingers round, make sure the whole thing's flush, because once we put this aluminium top plate on, it could snap if it's not applied correctly. And what I'm gonna do is just lift this little tab up slightly, and I'm gonna leave that screen protector on for now. So here goes our front plate. Have a quick look around the sides, make sure everything's fitting correctly. No big gaps, nothing looking too out of place. We're now going to take our screws. Now, all the screws in this particular set are the same, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in this top right hand corner and just put it down on loose. And then I'm going to move to this bottom left just to make sure things stay nice and square and plumb. I'm just going to just check around that screen again that everything is in place because I'm really paranoid. It's quite a thin display and I don't want to end up cracking it or snapping it. And now I do the opposite corners again. And then I'm going to go left to right. So far, so good. That was really, really easy to do. As you can see, we've already got a display in there. We've got this lovely keyboard. We've got our trackball, our D-pad. Really, really nice buttons as well. Just have a quick check on the sides to make sure everything looks like it's seated flushly. Superb. Right, now we've mounted the front plate, we're gonna flip it over. And our next step is to fit our little silicon power button into this hole up here. 
Now we need to take our main board and when we put this board in we need to make sure that the IO is lined up and in the picture it says to just gently place the IO in first and then come down like so. Just make sure that's all lined up. Everything seems to be a bit of whack. There we go. Marvellous. Now we need to get four more screws in to secure this. And last one. And then we'll just quickly check that that power button is functioning correctly. And yep, we can hear that it's clicking away nicely. Our next step is then to lift up this little black clip and then bend our ribbon cable up and over into the hole. Just to make sure we don't actually fold this, we just let it bend naturally so we don't accidentally pinch it or break the cable. And once you're happy that that's in the correct place, you just gently pull down. The clip. There we go. So that's that part done. The next, next part is where we were supposed to mount our core into here. We haven't got our core just yet. Now we're going to gently feed our Wi-Fi antenna through this hole here. And once we are round on the other side, we're going to just gently pull away the adhesive. And we're going to stick this down onto the actual chassis itself. Like so. I'm just going to leave that protective cover on there for now until we get our pie in there. Next up, it's time to drop the speakers in. So they have these little protective layers on here that we just need to gently remove. And then these get dropped in sticky side down, just in these little holes here. And it shouldn't really matter which way around these go, as there are contacts on the board on both sides, so it doesn't really make a difference which way you put these little speakers in. So if you look at the adapter board, you can see that there are pads both sides on both speakers, so yeah, it doesn't matter which way these go in, both ways should be fine. Speaking of which, now that our speakers are in, we can now add our expansion board. We've only got the base board for the moment now for the expansion card. We don't have any 4G or anything like that. So this is just gonna go straight in like so, and just make sure that those speakers are connected for us. This is once again gonna be secured by two screws. And in a future video, we will be placing this particular card with the expansion card that will give us an access to GPS, SDR, Mashtastic, and Wi-Fi as well. We're now gonna put on our blanking plate. That's just gonna go in here and fill this gap. Our next job is now to fit the battery board. To do this, we are just going to push these pins into the battery pins on the power and line it up with the screws. There we go, that's all connected up. And now we can screw this down with four more screws. Right, so next up we are going to mount our CM5 16 gigabyte light Pi onto the converter bracket. So the way you do this is you just line up both ends little white lines around it and then once you're nice and level with it you just gently push down and both ends should kind of click this is then going to go straight into this dim style slot where we'll place it in at a slight angle and push down we're now going to attach our ipex connector straight onto the wi-fi of the board so once again, just make sure this is level and flush, and then push down. There we go. I'm just going to just gently guide those wires to be nice and out the way. 
And that is our CM5 now installed. Next up is installing the 18650 batteries. I've got a lovely matched pair, which I've checked with a multimeter. They are both currently balanced. The negative end is the flat end. The positive end is the one with the bump, just like you get in your dual A's. And you will notice something slightly different here with these 18650s, and that is the fact that they both go the same way. So you see that the negative side is the same and the positive side is the same on both sides. So the last thing we need to do before we put this cover on is to put our big old thermal pad on. So just make sure you remove both sides of the plastic coating, otherwise it will do absolutely nothing. And I'm gonna place mine primarily over the top of the CPU there. Might see if we can get a little bit of overhang onto the Wi-Fi board just so it's touching all the chips possible, like so. So now all we have to do is put on the back cover, put on the stand, and this build is complete. So let's do that now. So back cover goes on like so. And then we have four screws, one in each corner. We then have one screw in the middle. This is to hold the stand flush when we're not in use. Then we have two more screws to attach our brackets, so we just gently hook these over onto the ears. Like so. Push it underneath that mounting screw, and then these screws just go over the top to keep it all in place. And there you go, we are now fully assembled. Right, so that's the U console built. It goes together really, really easy. I said the most difficult part is making sure the screen stays in flush before you tighten it up, and maybe just the amount of pressure you have to put on to put the battery pack in there. Most dangerous part I would probably say is uh, make sure your batteries are actually balanced because you don't want to have missed balanced batteries being charged at the same time at different rates with different voltages it can get quite dangerous quite quickly so just make sure they're balanced in there as well so putting the carbon computers sd card in here so this should be kali linux so if we now push this button for two seconds at the top give it a second and there you go it's come to life and it's starting to boot just make sure you're patient with that boot it does take a second for it all to kick in but once it kicks in the machine becomes pretty quick now, I have been daily driving this for a couple of days now, uh, so it has had a bit of use. I have put an extra antenna on the side here, as the pre-built-in one here is absolutely terrible. So the second you can get an external antenna mount on there, I would recommend it. And uh, I've just got the base install of Kali here, and you can see the keyboard works really, really nicely. It boots up relatively quickly, and the full Kali instance is absolutely marvelous. So you can see that the mouse is really responsive. We have got easy clicking buttons. We can use shortcuts to open terminal. The whole thing just works really, really smoothly. Uh, not had much use of the joypad yet, but use plenty of the stuff the keyboard, plenty of the mouse, and plenty of the arrow keys. The arrow keys are really useful when we're actually web browsing, so we can actually scroll up and down the web pages. So I'm not gonna go too much into the rest of this, as this is meant to just be a build video, but first impressions, absolutely bob on, love this thing. Got some really exciting ideas around getting a Proxmark set up on here, about getting the software-defined radio, mesh-tastic, and GPS set up on here with the Hacker Gadgets expansion board and the Hacker Gadgets uh, antenna mount with their antenna pack as well. So fingers crossed that that's on its way to me soon. So I hope you found this video helpful and easy enough to follow to get your own built or inspired you to go and get one of these. Any questions, drop them in the comments. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Happy hacking.